Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today to discuss our paper inside the black box of child penalties. My name is Elia de la Cruz Toledo, and I'm joined by co-authors Sandra Aguilar Gomez and Eva Arceo Gomez. The research question that we want to explore on this paper is what is the impact of children on women's and men's labor market outcomes and time use? And the motivation to dug into this paper is to understand the emphasis, well, there has been a recent emphasis on child penalties as a persistent source of wage differential that is interacting with gender norms and public policies. And there has been a lot of recent literature that is exploring, and also over the years, uh, employment patterns for the US, different Sc Scandinavian countries, and other countries in Western Europe. However, the context in developing countries is very different, and it's really important to understand employment patterns for women in these areas because gender norms tend to be uh, more traditional in developing countries. There's a higher reliance on extended family members providing childcare, and sometimes it's preferred to institutional settings. There's a, a large informal sector that is sometimes used in developing countries as a source of flexibility and a fallback option that is preventing mothers from completely exiting the labor force and just remaining in um, the informal labor sector. In Mexico, um, so the wage differential literature has stated that some of the differences in um, wages are due to differences in endowments, differences in returns, and some unexplained portion of the of wages, of the wage gap. In Mexico, there's uh, recently has been a larger proportion of women that are attending higher education in the productive age. And there has been an institutional effort that is trying to tackle discrimination. However, uh, even though there's a new institute that receives all of these complaints, and a quarter of those are related to pregnancy, discriminate, pregnancy related discrimination, there hasn't been too much enforce, enforcement or oversight. So not a lot of firms have been fined for this discrimination. And even though the wage gap has decreased over the, over the years from 90, a 1990 wage gap of 14% to uh, seven, around 7% 7 in, the, in 2010, there is still like extremely low proportion of women participating in the labor force, around 43%. And uh, the majority of them can be overrepresented in the informal labor sector. So we still hypothesize that the gap is associated with the role of caregiving that is falling predominantly on women. And so what we do in this paper is we want to estimate child penalties in the Mexican context by using an event study framework um, to analyze the impact of children on labor outcomes and time use. Um, and also we use an instrumental variable as a robustness check we look at the role of the informal sector as both the source of flexibility and fallback option. And we also look at the outcomes of other household members, which is one of our main contributions. As a preview of findings, we see that there's a strong impact on labor market outcomes of women. So we see that women during pregnancy start decreasing their labor force participation. So one year post birth, women are 43 percentage point less likely to participate in the workforce, and men are four percentage points more likely to do so. So post-birth, we also see that men have an increase in their labor income, but women see a decrease in their labor income. There's heterogeneity in the effects of childbearing between formal and informal workers. There are uh, extensive gender differences in the burden of unpaid labor associated to childbirth. And we see that female household members support new mothers. So we see that working age women in the household that are not the mother increase, uh, decrease their probability of working, while men that are not the father in the household do not. And the data that we use is the Mexican labor survey that it includes a panel that is rotating similar to that of the census. So there are households entering the sample each round of the survey and each household is included for a total of five consecutive quarters. We find rich information there regarding time use, the, um, the type of sector that they work in, whether it's formal or informal, and we're able to link 
all of the uh, employment histories of non uh, parents that are within the household. Our sample is restricted to workers that are at least four quarters in that panel um, along the ages of 16 to 64 years of age. And our empirical strategy is an event study framework that is typically used in this literature to capture the global treatment effect of all children in the sample and addresses the potential endogeneity of becoming a mother. So our uh, alphas are time dummies that we include for those quarters, but we exclude um, the T equal four, which is four quarters pre-birth. And that's how we, um, we see our results. We also include age profile, calendar, year, um, shocks, um, individual fixed effects to sort of control for different things um, surrounding this employment pattern uh, to control non parametrically for cycle, trends, and business cycles. So let's move on to the results. Um, in these plots, we uh, in this graph, we plot the alphas that uh, Elia mentioned uh, capture the effect of children and the relative time with respect, with respect to the birth can be seen in the x-axis. Uh, and we highlighted the time of conception between the trimester minus three and trimester minus four, and also the uh, time of birth that is trimester zero, between zero and one. Um, so in this plot, we see the coefficient of the estimate, the estimate coefficient of the impact of, um, of children on uh, women's and men's labor force participation. On the plot on the left, we see the, the impact on the probability of having positive working hours. And we see an impact of almost 30% uh, 30 and points decrease uh, in the probability of having positive working hours for women. Uh, at the point at the trimester of birth and in the longer run um, that is four trimesters after birth there still remains an impact uh, of roughly 20 percent um, we when we consider uh, the plot B uh, on the right side uh, for this plot we consider women to be still in the for workforce when they're taking a maternity leave so Really, um, discounting that out from the from the effect, we see slightly smaller effects that round between that range between 25, uh, almost 25 percent decrease in percentage points in the probability of working at the moment of birth, and uh, 15 percentage points one year later. Um, more on the extensive margin in this graph, we compare women who were uh, working at the beginning of the panel when, with women who weren't, and we and we see slightly different dynamics. Um, so what we see for women that weren't working at the beginning is that they keep, uh, that they end up being even more uh, stopped out of the workforce um, after childbirth. Then we look at the intensive margin of the impacts of children on, on labor market outcomes. Uh, on the plot of the left, we see the impact on women um, who are working at the beginning. And then we keep only the women who never uh, stopped working, um, who never stopped being in the labor force. And we see, and just as before, we see different like, dynamics um, in which, uh, for women that never stop working, um, there is a more pronounced recovery in their hours work. So their long or medium run, uh, one year later effect is of approximately 20% in their hours work. Um, and what we see, another interesting finding what, that we are showing here is that men potentially compensate with an increase of uh, between 1.7 and 1.9 hours of one year uh, after birth. Then we saw the impacts of, uh, uh, of children in the short run on income. Um, what we see is slightly, uh, is robust results regardless uh, if we use hourly wage or, or monthly income. And what we see is that one year after birth, men have had an increase of 11%. Uh, percent. 
uh, in their labor income and women see a decrease in uh, 33%. And now we will move on to a result on, on unpaid labor uh, for mothers and fathers and also for other household members, which is one of our most noble contributions uh, with this paper. Um, in this slide, what we wanted to highlight is the difference between the impacts uh, on men's and women unpaid labor when we look at percentage change, like on the left, versus when we look at the absolute change. So what we see is that while the percentage change impact that children have on men's and women's uh, hours of unpaid work is roughly similar, when we look at the absolute hours, uh, what we see is that children have a widening impact on the gap of unpaid labor between men and women. So we see a 16 hour increase in this gap um, after having children and a 10 hour increase when uh, we keep women that stayed in the labor force during the entire sample. Um, finally, uh, we see that there is an impact uh, on child penalty and other household members that are women and that are not the mother of the children, which reflects some of the degree of the, um, of the reach of the gender norms within the household over women, even when they don't have the child themselves. We also looked at the differenti differential impacts between the formal and informal sector. Uh, what, these graphs, what these graphs show are the post probability of leaving the workforce uh, during the relative time with respect to, chil to childbirth. And when we, what we wanted to highlight is how the bulk of the impact is felt by women on the informal sector, which we see in the plot on the right. Uh, and as usual, and with the, as with other results, men remain largely unaffected in the transitions, uh, in the sexual transitions, uh, when they have children. We also did some uh, heterogeneity analysis um, to see how how uh, throughout the distribution of income children have different impact on women. So we see that most of the impact is felt by, by women below the 70 percentile of income. And these effects are uh, stopping statistically significant after uh, for the 80 percentile and 90 uh, percentile. We see uh, for paid work, uh, we see different, uh, a different pattern, and what we see is that women in the higher uh, range of the distribution, above the 60, per 60 percentile of the distribution, they don't see a recovery in such short term as the partial recovery that we observe for the first half uh, of the distribution of uh, hours of paid work. And for unpaid work, what we, what we want to highlight here is that the impacts are um, can be described as systematic because regardless of uh, part of the distribution in which women are, they have roughly similar impacts on their hours of unpaid work when they have children. Okay, now we will proceed to uh, our robustness checks. We did a series of robustness checks. The first one is an instrumental variable approach. Yeah, in this instrumental variable approach, uh, we exploit uh, this literature on the fact that families have a stronger preference for having um, mixed gender of their offspring. Um, in the case of Mexico, following uh, and in the spirit of Angrist and, and Evans, uh, Cruzos and Galliani showed uh, estimates for sex preferences for couples both in Mexico and Argentina. In the case of Mexico, whenever families had uh, two girls, they had a 4% percentage point higher probability of having a third child. Whereas in the case of uh, having two boys, uh, they only had around 2.5 2 uh, percentage point higher probability of having a third child. So uh, since in our data, we don't observe uh, that many families with three children, uh, we decided to use only the sex of the first child as uh, in the spirit of uh, Almonet and uh, co-authors in 2013. So um, 
our instrument uh, interacts this dummy variable of having a first uh, child who's a girl with all these uh, time dummies that we that defined our event study and the usual assumptions on uh, instruments apply here. The first stage we found that having a daughter at first uh, increases the probability of having a second child by 1.4 percentage points. And this is very uh, statistically significant. So we have a very strong first stage uh, of just selecting into having a child in, within our sample. So even though these um, results are uh, expressly for second children, uh, the results we obtained from the IV strategy are not that different from those that we had in the event study of the OLS uh, estimation that we presented before. So the navy, the navy line is the OLS and the bright green is the uh, instrumental variable and we see that female labor force participation still drops uh, since before having the, chi the, 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 the child, so since pregnancy. Hours, uh, hourly wage also drops and uh, it still drops by a very la large percentage, both for uh, all the sample and for second children. Um, paid work, uh, the hours worked also drop for both. And here we find basically no difference between the OLS and the IV and unpaid work also increases in both cases. Um, we also received some uh, comments on whether there is selection into maternity, in particular, whether if women are experiencing something, something akin to a national filter dip, uh, they would uh, select into maternity since they are not doing very well in, in, in their careers or in the labor market. Uh, so there is this uh, opinion that says that there's some sort of negative selection into maternity. Uh, and in order to check whether that was true or not, we reran our quantile regressions, uh, comparing women who had children with those that, who didn't have children. And what we found is that those who had children, in fact, part from higher wages, uh, also higher uh, hours of work. However, they part from the same amount, more or less, of unpaid work. So if, if anything, we find that there is positive selection into maternity instead of negative selection which in fact uh, reinforces our results uh, on, on, on the negative effects that children have on, on their mothers. We also ran some other checks, uh, which we are not showing here for the sake of time, but um, we don't find that this is dominated by women who are single or uh, and then had a child. And uh, the effect is more or less the same for married and unmarried women. And uh, sort of like um, consistent with the effects that we found on, on the quintiles uh, of income, we also found that women who have higher education uh, have a lower effect on wages and um, on participation. Okay, so just to sum up our results, we found uh, that women in Mexico do experience a child penalty in the Mexican labor force at the extensive margin. Uh, they drop around 43 percentage points, uh, their participation, whereas men increase by four percentage points. At the intensive margin, they decrease their hours very substantially. And uh, also we observe as a result, a decline in wages and labor income of women, whereas for men, we in fact find a, an increase in their income. So uh, women in the informal sector, which is uh, one of the differences of our, of our paper with the rest, with the literature of the Western countries, um, uh, are more likely to drop out of labor force, uh, whereas uh, men are more likely to enter and remain in the labor force. We also uh, checked this uh, result on unpaid hours, which uh, is also novel in the literature. Um, and we found that the, the gap of unpaid work widens uh, between men and women after they have a child. And uh, so our study still provides further evidence also in developing countries that uh, women have a, a balancing act when it comes to market work and home responsibilities. And hence uh, in the public policy realm, uh, we expect uh, the authorities to improve childcare services and uh, uh, somehow in, uh, improve the culture that assigns these gender roles to both men and women. Uh, however, unfortunately, we haven't seen that in the current administration uh, and we want to analyze what the effect of the changes that they have brought upon uh, has been on the child penalty.
thank you very much for taking your time to uh, see our video and we hope that you enjoyed our research. Bye.